Welcome back to the Electrical Building Design Show. In this episode, we're going to talk about new features for electrical engineers in Revit 2026. Taking a look at this list of new features that Autodesk published, we're going to be specifically looking at the system features for MEP, the ones that are related to the E portion for electrical engineers. Looking at this list of features, the first one they have listed is browser organization for panel schedules. What this feature does is in your project browser, you have the list of tabs for your organization. They've added a new tab for panel schedules where you can filter and sort and group your panel schedules in the project browser. That's a nice upgrade for electrical engineers to keep track of the panel schedules in your project. There's also a nice little update where they have tabs at the top of the project browser where you can select the different major categories. It makes navigating it a little bit easier. It's a nice upgrade that they don't actually mention anywhere. The next feature they mention is tag schedule part type and distribution system. Uh, it's a little unclear from the label what that means. So I dug into this feature. What this does is it adds two new fields to schedules for electrical equipment. You have part type and you have distribution system. Part type lists whether it's a panel, a transformer or another panel. And then there's a distribution system and secondary distribution system that just gives you the voltage for that piece of electrical equipment. This is a nice improvement to what you have available in your schedules for your electrical equipment. So you can actually schedule that information and then filter and sort on it. So if you want to uh, filter and sort on panels versus transformers, you can do that. If you want to display the voltages of all of your electrical equipment, that can show up in your schedules as well. The next feature is enhanced system zones. This is specifically for doing zones for HVAC load calculations. So this is for mechanical engineers, not related to electrical. Then we have MEP categories display improvements. This is for handling the display of items when you've selected MEP as the discipline for your view. It takes some additional types of devices and treats them as MEP, uh, some audiovisual stuff, some fire alarm stuff. So that's going to show up better when you're choosing an MEP discipline for your view. As an electrical engineer, you might be dealing with some of that stuff. So if you've struggled with getting that to display right in your views, this is going to help you out. The next feature is globalize electrical conductors. And man, if I was going to name this feature, that's not what I would call it. I think I'd go with something a little more generic, like improved wire sizing or something like that. Uh, they're emphasizing the globalization nature of the electrical conductors, but that's not really what they've done with this feature. What they did is in electrical settings, they took out the wire sizes and they created a brand new command, which is electrical conductors and cable settings. So they moved all of those wire sizes into this new command. They have places to put materials and diameters and insulation ratings and things like that for your wires. All of this information isn't really used anywhere, but they have places to put it all. So they have the framework for defining all of your wire sizes. Previously, the wire sizes were associated with an ampacity. Then they would use the voltage drop calculations that they had built into Revit and size your wires for you. Unfortunately, the voltage drop didn't actually work very well. There are a lot of limitations on that. So it would give you a wire size with no way to change it. In 2026, they also dropped voltage drop. So they're not sizing your wires for voltage drop anymore. Instead, they're letting you choose all of your wire sizes from this list that you're creating from this new command. So now for every circuit, you can go in, choose that circuit type, choose the wire type, and then you get the configuration of wires that you want for that circuit. This is better because you now have control of your wire sizes. You do have to create all of these configurations. So there's a little bit of work there and you've lost any sort of automation on your wire sizes. You are manually choosing each size for each circuit. As I frequently say about Revit Electrical, that's not how I would have designed it. In fact, quick commercial break here. I did design electrical software for Revit ElectroBIM and we have wire sizing in there and it does automatic sizing for you based upon your loads and your panel sizes with the ability to override it since you're the engineer and you need to be able to set those sizes. So uh, if you're interested in automatic wire sizing in Revit, check out ElectroMim. That's available at our website, designmaster.biz. All right, commercial break over. Next feature is apparent power calculations enabled for analytical loads. This is Autodesk's continued attempt to take their preliminary load calculations and make them usable and useful. Uh, what this is, is it's a replacement for your Excel spreadsheets where you're doing your initial load calculations for your project, figuring out your loads in the building. They're trying to move all of that into Revit for you. It's actually not a bad idea. It's just implemented really, really poorly and that all of these loads and everything you define in this preliminary section is not related to the model at all. 
So you create this panel in this preliminary section. It's not related to the panel on the floor plan. So you end up with something that's essentially your Excel spreadsheet kind of shoehorned into Revit, but you have to use Revit's implementation and it doesn't work all that well. They're trying to improve it. They made some changes for apparent power calculations. So it's getting better, but it's really not something that is gonna be all that useful uh, compared to the Excel spreadsheets that you've already got and are using. So I would recommend you stick with that. Next feature is circuit spare and space design continuity. Previously in Revit, you had circuits with things connected and then you had spares and spaces and those were treated a little bit differently. You could have shared parameters on circuits that actually had things connected because those were like seen as real circuits. And then the spaces and spares were kind of this weird thing. They didn't have shared parameters. They didn't really show up in the project browser very well. So these are circuits to you as the engineer, but Revit treated them very, very differently from circuits that had things connected. Uh, in 2026, they've unified those. So circuits that are spares and spaces work the same way as circuits with stuff connected. So those two types of circuits are really just being seen as circuits now. So it's an improvement on what they were doing with circuits. This is actually a nice feature. It lets you use those spaces and spares a little bit better in your projects. Finally, we have improved electrical circuit path. And digging into this, what it's do talking about is that the circuit path feature works better with nested families. So if you have nested families with connectors nested inside of them, apparently the circuit pathing wasn't working very well before, and now it's gonna work better in in 2026. I feel like this is a bit of an edge case. I wasn't actually able to make a sample where this made any difference, but if you are using families that are nested and you've been having trouble, this will work better for you. That's it for new features for electrical engineers in Revit 2026. Overall, I think it's a nice set of improvements, some quality of life adjustments, some things that you're gonna find useful in your projects. The biggest change is to the wire sizing. And overall, I think it's actually a really good change for Revit. Pulling voltage drop out makes the electrical feature set much cleaner. It's much more clear what they're trying to do and what they're not trying to do with the features in Revit. Giving you as the engineer control over the wire sizes means you can actually use those wire sizes in Revit rather than ignoring them and doing them some other way. That said, you still have to set all those wire sizes manually. If you want a little bit of help with that, check out ElectroBIM. We help with the wire sizing. We also do single line diagrams. We actually add voltage drop calculations back in that are correct, short circuit analysis, other features like that. You can learn more and download a free trial at our website, designmaster.biz.